See, here's the here's the fallacy in that. Because I, I I use myself for example. I've had women come in and out of my life who've been great women, um, or who had the potential to be great women, may not have been great at that moment. The women who were in a place that I wasn't, if I would have stayed, I would have fucked it up even more. I would have fucked them up. I would have destroyed them. And so they came in my life to, to show me that, to help show me where I was in the stages of my life. But they weren't, they weren't meant for them to stay in my life. They were just there to give me a particular life lesson to get me to help get me to where I am today. The woman, the women that are in my life now, 10 years ago, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to deal with me. They wouldn't know what to do with me at that point in my life then. Mm Mm-hmm. So it doesn't negate the fact that them coming in my life now, like you said, is not is for a particular purpose, for a particular reason. But they were going through their preparation seasons. So if they would have came in my life, like I said, 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, no telling how much destruction that we would have done to one another. You know, so timing is when we're ready. You know, the universe, God, the almighty, whatever name, you know, individuals have for, you know, the creator is not going to give us, it's the infamous saying, you know, God is not going to put on you more than you can bear. Well, the mm-hmm. reason, the reason why is because you don't have the, the toolage and the resources and your tool belt to deal with certain things. So when things are released unto us, it is because we have the magnitude to adhere and to be able to manage a particular thing properly or to get us to the next phase of our evolution in Mm -hmm. life. So this is why when it comes to the one I thought my first wife was the one. There were some things that she needed worked out to work on. There were some things I needed to work on. It took for us to go through our situation to bring those things out mm-hmm. because we would have kept going along in life, getting in relationships, thinking that everything was okay with us individually. My next relationships that followed after that, if I didn't go through those situations with them to shed light on things that still needed to be worked on, we would have just jumped in relationship after relationship after relationship, bring in death and destruction to other individuals along with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the light, the lessons, I wholeheartedly agree with that people come in our lives to give us particular lessons. It is up to us as individuals to be consciously aware during that moment in time in the understanding of what that lesson might be and, and, and be conscious that there is a lesson to be learned. But going back to the love portion of it, What oftentimes happen is we see somebody we like, we start dating somebody we like, and we put restrictions on that individual. We don't see that person for who they are. And, and, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying restrictions as far as standards or guidelines. I'm saying restrictions that most of us don't even know that is put upon us. They're, they're secret uh, um, 
there are secret standards, secret expectations that is often that we often put on one another. So when that happens, we oftentimes, even when things are going good, we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. So yeah, and I, I don't I don't disagree with you on that. I guess I think so let me you brought up a good point because uh, and just kind of made me think of this. Um for me, I think when I say the one and, and what I mean by that is I think that I think that there's someone that comes along that so so first of all, I think that relationships, I think that um I think we're such a instant gratification type of uh world now or a type of expectation that you think that someone is supposed to come to you like literally wrapped in a package almost. And it's like, okay, like, you know, this is I mean, take them how they are. If they're the one, like you don't have like, I mean, th this is it. This is no, that's not what I mean by that. I think if someone's the one. I, it doesn't mean that you don't have to work at it. It doesn't mean you're not going to have, you know, uh, compromises or, or issues. It just because, and so when that presents itself, it's like, oh, nope, they're not the one because we got into a fight or nope, nope they're not the one because they do this. Like, that's not what I mean. I think that when I, I think that the one means because you have this overwhelming love for them that not that they can do anything and do no wrong, but it's, it's literally thinking about the, them not being in your life or them not, you, you know, you guys, you know, being like separate from each other is a, a feeling you don't want. And because you have this un, th this overwhelming feeling of love for them that you will do anything to, to keep them. And that's what makes them the one, like, does that make sense? Yes, it does. And this is why I say it makes sense. Because you don't know if that person was the one until you get to the end. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they're the one in the first year, second year, maybe not even the third year. You've gone through some shit to realize, okay, this is my person. You know, and I agree because one of the things that you said is that we oftentimes, we oftentimes, um, Oftentimes, what we typically do is that, just like you said, we get into a relationship or we start talking with someone and we're going through, um, especially women, the infamous checklist. <laughs> and so you're going through things and then just like you said, the first fight, second or even the third fight, you know, oh, well, this person is not the one. Well, you ain't going through shit. You ain't going through nothing. So how do you know? You know what I'm saying? And this is why I, I think that the term, just like God, just like love, the one has been so bastardized and so watered down that nobody wants to go through anything anymore. No one wants to, 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 to invest in making mm -hmm. something work, you know? And this goes into the next point, when it comes to um, one-itis, um, is this thing that you had mentioned earlier, um, looking for someone who is uh, basically a completed carbon copy of themselves. You know, we want a finished product to come into our lives. So it actually takes us off of the hook so we ain't got to put no real work in. We ain't got to put no real investment, no time and no energy in, you know, and we ain't got to fight for nothing. We just want them to come completed. Um, we want them to be the greatest sex partner, the greatest communicator, um, the, the, just the greatest individual collectively when they walk into our lives. And <laughs> that is just so, so not reality. And mm -hmm. I think that so many, uh, I think that oftentimes so many women have such ridiculous and asinine expectations that they actually, 
they actually relate with a man or another individual depressed and anxiety driven because and, and and i say that in the sense because men see a woman for who she is and every woman that we encounter we 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 put y'all in a specific category whereas a lot of women they entered into the courting stage the dating stage um and they have such high expectations that if a man sneezes wrong, oh shit, I fuck it, I can't deal with them. You know, this this ain't the one for me. You know, this, you know, I I gotta move on. Right or wrong? No, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I think that I think one of the disconnects is just is learning someone, is figuring out like just because someone might be men for you or the one doesn't mean you don't have to try. It doesn't mean that they're that you're gonna know how they operate and know what, what makes them tick and what makes them like, you're just, you're not like, you're not going to know all that stuff. So I think that that's the, that's the whole part of dating and, and, and a relationship is figuring that stuff out. And if I don't know what you're, if I don't know how you communicate or even when you communicate what it means, then I don't really know what's, what to hold. Like, you know, I don't know what something means to you. So you might do something and that's your way of saying like, I really like you or I, this, or I respect you because of how, because of what you, you know, what you did and how you did it. But I don't know that. So until that's communicated and I figure you out, then I'm not going to know what things mean. And so I think that that definitely has to like happen and we have to be able to like, yeah, get to know someone and figure out what and why they're doing something. Most people don't want to get to know an individual. That takes too much time. You know? And 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 so so with that, I think I'm good with I'm good with time being taken. If it's if like I one hundred percent think that that relationships and good relationships and lasting relationships do take time. But I do still think that there has to be not necessarily a cutoff. I don't, I don't want you to take that wrong when I say that, because I'm not putting it on, I'm not saying that there has to be a timeline, but I definitely think that there needs to be um, communication and almost just like, just little stepping stones amongst yourselves so that you know that like, like, you know, things are moving forward. They're going in the direction while I'm getting to know you. And while this time is being taken, we're still, we're, we still remain to stay on the same page and we still want to, we still both want this to go in that direction. And if we ever feel like we don't, then we need to communicate with each other. And then we, and then we figure out where we need to place each other from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think that that's the problem though, is people just don't want to spend that much time because they don't, because like, I think they're worried about like what the time being spent could mean. And I, and I get that at our age, there should be a cutoff time. I'm I'm not about to sit up here and, and and be in a relationship with someone and there is no um clear status as far as my intentions, what I'm looking for and the direction that I ha- that I'm heading. Yeah. Yeah. Now as a man, I know this is going to piss some women off and it's okay. As a man, I'm going to give you a timeline. I'm going to give you my purpose. I'm going to give you my direction. After that, it is your decision if you're going to jump on my direction of life. And if you are going to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um if you are if, if if you are going to be a helpmate you know it, it, there's it's not about to be no power struggle i am the conductor i am the captain now you can be co-pilot co-captain that's fine but you have no you're not giving any direction in which way i'm moving which way i'm going you can come along but I'm going to do this with or without you. And at some point in time, 
if I feel that you're not a necessity in the direction that I'm going, I'm going to cut you off. Like one thing people can say about me, my cutoff game is strong. <laughs> like, I, because I, I don't have time. You know, mm -hmm. for the, I don't have time for the games. I don't have time for the shenanigans. So if I tell you something and, you know, you're an adult, it's your decision to do it or not to do it. Whatever the case may be, whatever the circumstances is, whatever the repercussions may come, that's what it is. I done told you. And I, st I stand on that, you know? And so some of the biggest things some of the biggest issues that come up in a situationship, in a relationship, in a friendship with benefits is the miscommunication of sex, miscommunication period, miscommunication of resources, whether it be finance, whether it be time, whatever the case may be. Can you Will you deal with a man who has 60% of everything that you want, but the sex is horrible? Sixty percent of everything. So what are we saying? I mean, he's a he's a he's a solid man. He's mm -hmm. a solid man. He he provides security um emotionally. Uh, psychologically, he loves you. Um, he makes sure the house is taken care of. But when it comes to the bedroom, he may be inadequate. Okay, and that, yeah. So, so that was the that was you know the obviously the main thing that I presented to you was you know finding someone um, that really had everything that you pretty much like wanted and was looking for, except for <laughs> did not fulfill you sexually and. I do think that that's a very important part of a relationship because that's when you obviously find, you know, that's when, if that's not being met, then that's when I feel like people are, are finding it elsewhere. And, and, you know, if something like that's happening and that's not something that like we had discussed, you know, that's, that was, you know, a part of the agreement or the situation ship, you know, to begin with, then that's where your problems come in. Um, but I guess for me, it's like, okay, why is the sex not good? Like, is, is, is the communication not like, I mean, is, is it something that could be worked out and could be something that like, it's just, it's just a lack of communication where you're just not doing what I like, what I'm enjoying or I like, or, or like vice versa. Like what, I, I mean, is it something that could be, that could be worked on in that department or is it just, or is it like emotion? Like you don't feel anything when you're, I mean, cause that's the, that's a bigger issue. If you're having sex with someone that you are with, and supposed to be, um, you know, suppose, I mean, if they, if they match and meet everything, but you don't want to be, um, intimate with them because you don't feel anything for them in those moments. And you're not, you know, you're not connected, um, in a way that you should be. It's not just that they do this wrong or they do that wrong. Like, I guess that's the thing. If it's an emotional problem and emotional connection, then I think that that's, I think that's a bigger issue. Most men don't, don't connect think... emotionally when they're having huh? sex. Most men don't connect emotionally when having sex. You might find 20% of men who are able to connect emotionally and spiritually in intimacy. Most men are not able to. Okay. Well then, I mean, I, I mean, I, then I, I guess for me, it's, it's, it's the woman then like it's the I mean if the I mean if that's what a woman is supposed to I mean during sex like a woman does do that a woman so if she if she finds that a man fulfills you know all these areas and does all the stuff that she always thought she wanted in a relationship but that area where you where you where a woman naturally should and and be connected to a man and you're not or you're or maybe you had a past relationship that you did feel like that was one of the best parts of the relationship, but they didn't have other things. And you're thinking about that relationship over the one that you're in, even though they have all the other stuff you thought you wanted, like that's a problem. <laughs> that's where the problem lies. That what? right there. Because one of the key things that you said, 
is that maybe uh, um, as far as past relationship or a couple of past relationships, and then the man that she's with, great man, good man, uh, takes care of his business, on point, purpose driven. But then in the bedroom, um, she's thinking of how um, Keith blew her back out, you know, and Bob don't don't uh, uh, send her orgasming up her her spine, you know, 15 times in a row like Keith does, you know, so she can't be uh, present in the moment that she's with Bob. Or maybe in, 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 so but I'm sorry, but that, but that, that is a big issue because the problem that so many men have with women having high body counts is because they don't know how to be present with the man that they're with, you know, saying, because they can, they're continuing to relive sexual encounters with the men prior. So this is why a lot of men, you know, may feel inadequate in the bedroom because of some experiences that she's shared or, you know, the way, the way that she throw it back, you know, he can tell that she's very experienced or her head game it is just sloppy toppy. So the way she does that, you know, he knows that, you know, she done had, you know, a, a nice amount of sausage in her mouth, you know. So, you know, now all of this plays a part and plays a role into the relationship. So what what now? No, I, I, I get that. I mean, I guess I don't, I guess I disagree a little bit in the sense that just because someone okay so just because a woman might do or act or um perform a certain way doesn't mean that it's because she's done it a whole bunch of times i mean maybe that maybe they did communicate and they and and she does know what he wants or what he's looking for and she's trying to do that or or emulate that but i feel like the connection point i feel like the connection part though like a woman does have that connection when she's having sex and so when you say that it could be from another man like coming before him or whatever and her thinking about that relationship i don't necessarily think that i think that sometimes if there's lacking in, so if you're lacking in that area of sex with the person who has everything it could literally be i mean it could just be because you do know or did know what it was like to connect with someone during during sex and you feel like you obviously should be and want to be with this person since they have everything else um it doesn't necessarily mean that you got around or that you had a whole bunch of body counts it could just be you know what that felt like and you know what it's like to have that connection with someone in that area and so it's almost like why am i not having it uh, with, with this person when, when they do satisfy me in, in all of the other areas. And if they do satisfy me in all the other areas, why is that not, why is that not enough? You know, I've been with women who are most emotionally detached when having sex. Like they're nasty as hell. Now I ain't talking about freaky because freaky and nasty is two different things. I'm talking about they're nasty as hell but emotionally unindepth. Good women, good women, but no emotional connection. It's not my, it's not a man's job to bring the emotional depth into intimacy. That is a woman's job. Can, I, I agree can, with you. No, can, I, I, can I absolutely some, agree with you. Can some women, can some men do it? Of course. But the men who are able to do it, they were taught by a woman. They were shown by a woman. They just men because, because the way we are, you know, we want to get right to it. It takes a woman to say, slow down, this, that, you know, and, and the in-depth she gets into it is going to pull him in more in-depth. It's going to slow him down. See, and this is like, A lot of my experience came from older women when I was younger. 
You know what I'm saying? They, they taught me intimacy. They showed me what intimacy is. They told me what a good bang fest was. And then they taught, and they, 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 I experienced different levels of intimacy with them. So getting with women my age or women younger than me, because I know what I know how to bring that experience in. And even then, because you have women out here who may have never experienced that. All they've experienced is men just banging them, bussing and getting up. That's a man's nature. So, okay, so then, so to answer that, or to not to answer that, to, to spin off of that and ask you a question, like, if that is happening and that person, if someone is doing that, because you were saying that a man naturally is just kind of unattached and not emotionally attached, like, does that, does that mean, or if that's happening, does that mean that that man does not look at, look at that woman or feel for that woman any, in any other way, but just sex? No, he may he may feel for her. He may have, um, he may he may care for her. I won't say feel for her. He may care for her, um, because the feeling connection from a man to a woman that happens over time. But he may care for her. Um, he may care for her more than he cares for any other woman outside, of course, his immediate the uh, the the immediate women of his family so the thing is and, and this is why you know going back to the the one the one itis myth you know when it comes to intimacy m m when it comes to romance first of all because i know a lot of women they they say you know in order for them to, in order for the intimacy to be brought out of them, they need romance. Women have no idea what romance is. Men are more romantic than women are. Because when was the last time that um, you heard about a woman getting a hotel room and laying roses all over the bed for her man and, you know, putting rose petals from the bed to the jacuzzi or the the bathtub and running bath water, putting, you know, lavender oil and different oils in the tub and, you know, massage. Women don't often do that. Mm -mm. Women look for men to do that. So when it comes to romance, women have a very small romantic bone in their body. <laughs> Y'all want it. But if a man was to ask you, well, what's romantic? Well, I don't know. That's up to you. Well, what do you mean? You're asking me for something that you have no clue. Mm -hmm. Because men know how to give it because we're, we're taught, we're trained how to do it. So we know how to do it. If it's not being done, as a woman, you have to ask yourself, have I been worthy enough to give receive it? Now, Going back to intimacy and sex, because they're two, they're two different things. Intimacy is an in-depth, it is, is an emotional, as well as a spiritual, whereas a, as well as a psychological connection during physical intercourse. That's intimacy in layman's terms. A lot, a lot of women don't even know how to connect all three of those to give through and to give mm -hmm. to give that experience and in sexual intercourse they know they may know how to do one out of the three along with you know uh, uh physical connecting but to bring all four in alignment most women have no clue how to do it mm -hmm. but they look for a man to do it but they have no clue of how to bring that experience to him. They don't know how to show him, you know? And like I said, I've experienced women who are 
intimately in tune as well as spiritual, psychological, and on top of all of that, nasty is all out here. Very few and far in between. But they were so they were so self-aware of themselves that they brought that experience. You know, and like I said, when a woman is in tune with herself in that aspect and she brings it to a man, that a man that is self-aware, God conscious of himself, it's a different level of intimacy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's when you have spiritualists talk about creating your reality, creating your world, that's done in intimacy. I agree with you. And I, but I think that, yeah, I think when someone has that and, and they match some with, I mean, that's me, that's me is kind of saying that you've, you've met your match or you found the one, because if they, if, if they have all that and, and, and it matches or connects with what you have and you have this incredible intimacy or encounter and, and vibe about it, like, I just feel like, that can't be, that can't go for nothing. Like that can't be like, that's your person. Like that's who, like, it, like, because it is so far and few between, I feel like that's, that's what I mean when I say like the one or your person, like, I mean, and, and do I think that you end up with the one or your person in the end all the time? No, I've said that. Like, so like, if you found that, or if someone has like, has that, I'm not, it doesn't mean that you're going to end up marrying or being with that person. Like, I, I, I truly believe that. Like, but you know what we often do as human beings is because we've been blessed to experience, to have that experience, we want it all the time. Absolutely. And, and why, so, why wouldn't you want, but why wouldn't you want to feel because, that way? Because like, you, do you know how detrimental that is? You know how damaging that is? You know how destructive that is? Because you can't see the person in front of you because uh, of your ex your expectations have become so high that you can't experience reality of the individual that stands in front of you. It's our job to create new memories, every experience that we have. But if I'm constantly reaching in the past, trying to bring it to my present and push it to my future, I might be destroying that individual that I, that I say that I care about. No, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The, when you put it like that, I, I definitely see that. So to sit up there and say, okay, you know what? I've experienced this. How do I bring that experience to my individual now? And, no, that's a good way to look at it. And, 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 if, and if it works out, fine. If it doesn't, are you okay with that? That's the thing though. Like that, that's what, the, that to me is all, that to me is, that's it right there is like, yeah. When you think like, to me, it's like just thinking about <laughs> thinking about someone that you feel so strongly about and, and being able to say like, you know, well, if it doesn't work out, like, you know, I'm going to be fine. Yes. I'm going to be fine. Everyone's going to be fine. Everyone's going to obviously continue and wake up the next morning. The sun's going to rise and set like it always does, but it's just that it's, it's just that thought of not having that person anymore. Like, and, and to me, like, that's like heartbreaking. But that's why, that's why anxiety is so high when it comes to women. Depression is high oftentimes when it comes to men, because we, we have, dreams and aspirations and if we don't continue to stay balanced if we don't have real dudes around us to keep us balanced and help maintain that we get off kilter mm -hmm. but one of the biggest things when it comes to women is that i've heard so many women say that they have a problem with living in the moment like that is a huge thing for women today Y'all don't know how to live in the moment. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and I get it because 
the older women get, the more secure you're looking to be. And I get that. If you had seven out of 10 in the past, why didn't you fight for it then? Why are you, uh, why are you looking in the past for what you didn't fight for and then looking now and like, well, you know, it's still possible, but yeah, but is it probable? Is it probable to happen? So at some point in time, we have to say, okay, at the end of the day, I'm going to end up having to settle. I'm going to have to figure out what is the most important thing for me to have with an individual to be, to, to experience the rest of my life with and, and move on. If it's, if these areas are subpar or okay, all right, let's figure this thing out and let's move on. Because the older we get, especially for women, the slimmer your opportunities become. Because you all have lived life in your early 20s. You've, uh, a lot of women live life fast and loose. And then they, you know, they went through, you know, uh, uh, the whole stage. Every woman has their whole stage, whether their whole stage is three or four. It's still probably con considered a whole stage. So the biggest problem that a lot of men have is that you were nasty with the first five men that you were with. You were freaky with the first five men that you were with. And then when you get with that individual, the white collar, the blue collar type of man who's purpose driven, who's on his business, all of a sudden you want to be Mother Teresa. No, I, I mean, I don't necessarily think that that is the case or that that's how you should be like i think that when you're when you do settle down and find that one person like that doesn't mean that and i get we've talked about this before i get that you don't sometimes women don't want to be a certain way with you know or don't want their you know significant other to see them in a certain light but i think if you're if you are truly like you trust them and are comfortable with them. I think you, I mean, I think that's that, like what's behind closed doors. Like, I mean, I think that's what you should be doing and giving your, your husband or your significant other is that like, is trusting them enough to open up and be a certain way with them. And then, okay. Like when you step outside, like you can be, you know, classy and not necessarily like, you know, like we kind of discussed earlier, like, you know, the quiet shy ones, you know, maybe are a little like, like are different behind closed doors. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't necessarily think that it means that you're, that you should be this saint or not be able to to let loose or open up to your husband or or significant other like that's who you should be able to do that with like but a lot of women aren't you know uh, uh, a lot of women they you know um when it comes to because here's here's first of all here's my thing why would you as a woman why would you be with a man that you can't trust so if you if if you say that you're with him and you trust him, so you should be able to trust him when he's smutting you out. You you should I agree be with that. I mean, but he's got it. But there, but there, there has to be. So there has to be. I mean, everything comes back to communication. Like he has to not sit there and know and ever throw it in my face or ever, like look at what I do with him and be like, oh, well, think that I did that with someone else or think that what you can't shame me for doing something with you when I trust you and behind closed doors and then turn it and be like, well, where'd you learn that from? Do you know what I'm saying? Like there has to be like, so I think that might be the fear. That could be the fear that a woman has is that if she does something with her man or does, you know, uh, something that, that he's going to, you know, obviously question like where it came from or, or almost make her feel bad for, for doing that. Do you know what I'm saying? Those are insecure dudes. Those are insecure men. Because if I'm with a woman, we get nasty, we get nasty. That's us. 
I'm I'm not about to sit up here, you know, saying because if I if I bring something to the table, if if it's within our understanding of the arrangement, I'm not about this is us, you know, saying And, and so. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I, that, like I say, I, I'm I'm different. Mm-hmm. No, I'm I'm different. So if if we making it do what it do, we is we making it do what it do. You know, what I'm saying whatever no, that may, whatever that may look it. like. So yeah, I absolutely. Don't, I don't want to hear. You know, what I'm saying I got a pro. See, when it come to sex when it comes to intimacy I got a problem with the word no don't tell me no if if this me and you don't tell me no now if we try it and you don't like it then I'm cool with that tell me you know what bae look I ain't really like that I tried it because you asked okay cool but don't just jump up because of past experiences and you tell me no. I, I don't want to hear that. I we got a problem now. Because you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously I, I agree. <laughs> I agree, you know, to an extent with that. Like obviously if, if your partner or some other is asking for, you know, something that they would like you to try with them because they either obviously know that they like it or they just want to experience it with you. Like I definitely I, I get that. I understand that. Yeah, and but that but that's why I say, you know. One of the biggest things I've always done in relationships, like I've never asked a, a, a woman, like what you know, what she's willing to do. That that list is like long as fuck. I don't want to hear her talk that much. <laughs> oh my god! So, <laughs> so my question has always been, what don't you do? That list is gonna be short as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then from there, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? And I'm that type of dude in the bedroom. I'm gonna push the boundaries. I'm not I'm not gonna be disrespectful with it, but I'm gonna push it a little here every now and again, a little there to to see. You know what I'm saying? Because I do believe that it is a comfortability factor, you know, when it comes to that. I, yeah. I, I I do believe that, you know, and one of the things is, and one of the, in, in my experience is that being comfortable with one another is a huge part. Intimacy, a woman should just bring that naturally. Unfortunately, Mothers never taught their daughters how to just be an intimate female on all levels in life, whether it be work, whether it just be friendship, whether it be a situationship, your significant other, whatever the case may be, mothers don't even know how to be intimate. So they can't teach their daughters how to be intimate. They're teach, they teach their daughters um, how to be sexual, but when it comes to intimacy, so many women have no clue on how to give that experience. Mm-hmm. And it's sad and it's unfortunate because what they're looking for, for men to bring to them when it comes to the bedroom is basically porn star atmosphere. When they themselves, <sighs> mouth game may be whack. You don't know how to throw it back, but you're looking for me to throw it down for 45 minutes, for an hour. Every now and again, we may be drinking. You're looking for it all night. But your level of sexuality is just, eh. Eh. (laughs) Well, and... I get what you're saying, but that's why, okay, so I get what you're saying, but that's where I, that's where that whole, 
that's where it comes full circle right back to the question is like you know the whole like 85 15 or the whole like whatever percentage you want to throw out there like that's why i feel like it comes back to that because you might be eh or you might be you know um just not maybe where your partner wants you to be but but you absolutely connect and have everything else and 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 when is when is you know enough enough or when is it not enough or like when do you draw that line or where do you draw that line um or like you had thrown out there i mean do you say okay i want you in my life because you fulfill this area but i'm like but this area is lacking so i'm gonna get that from someone else and 